Welcome. I'm Michael Bickert. Thanks for joining me for another discussion designed to help you advance your business. So before we get started, I want to remind you to pause the video, grab a notepad and a pen and take a note. Take something away today that's actionable, something that you can implement in your business. And as I like to say, it doesn't have to be something that you gleaned from the information I shared. It may be something that you were reminded of while I was talking. Maybe you were daydreaming and something else popped in your head that you know you need to do. Pause the video, write it down, commit to yourself that you're going to do it today. So that is the uh, concept that I want to talk about today is what do I do today? What should I do today? How do I spend my time? And Dr. Stephen Covey in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which I've listed as one of my top five business books. Actually, we can put a little, if you haven't seen that video, uh, check that out. He lists as one of his seven habits of highly effective people, putting first things first. And that concept is designed to help you determine what you should do with the time you have in a day. We agree that you have a finite amount of time. What is it, 168 hours in a week how will you spend that time? And he talks about the tyranny of the urgent and how people tend to spend their time on urgent tasks. And the urgency of the task tends to deceive them into interpreting the tasks as important. Just because something is urgent does not mean it's important. So let's define importance and urgency in the context of putting first things first and time management prioritization and leading you to good decisions about how to spend your time. So first, let's talk about importance. If something is important, let's, in, let's define that as something that leads to your greater success, leads to your greater contentment and happiness. Those are important things. If they lead toward the end, the uh, accomplishment of greater happiness, greater contentedness, greater success, they are important. If they do not lead toward that, they're not important. And then in terms of urgency, the definition we'll use for today's discussion of urgency is something that must be done within a, a specific time frame. Otherwise, it's sort of the opportunity passes, it expires, and it's no longer uh, can be done or should be done. So um, an example might be that somebody rings the doorbell and it's urgent to answer the door because if you don't answer the door, unless they're a psycho, they're going to go away in a very short period of time. That's urgent because if I don't do it within that time frame, the opportunity will pass and I won't be able to see who's at the door. And if it's my long lost relative who uh, I can't wait to see, uh, it may be a very important thing as well. But you see, it's it may not be important. Somebody at the door could be just trying to um, sell me something that I absolutely don't need. And so, but it's still urgent because there's a window of opportunity that passes if I don't do it. So those are the definitions. What I'd like to do is give you a visual aid here. And let's think about things that you may uh, do in a particular day. And then what I want you to do as homework is to, to draw this grid that we're going to uh, go through and um, maybe journal things for the next few days, at least one day, at least for one morning. But I would recommend you do this for two or three days. You journal things, not on your grid, just on a, a notepad, just, you know, maybe uh, those notepads, yellow notepads with lined pieces of paper and write down everything you do in a day. And maybe you write down the times that you were doing it just so you can see how much time you spent and that's a very useful um, uh, exercise as well. And then later we'll transfer those things into the quadrant, okay? So let's bring up the quadrant and you'll have a visual cue to, to share and follow along with me. Okay, so this is the grid that we were talking about. And you can see in the upper left hand corner, and I didn't take the time to look to see whether this is the same um, organization that uh, Stephen Covey sets out his grid 
So we've got quadrant one, two, three, and four. I probably should have taken the time to do that in case you ever hear about spending your time in a specific quadrant and it, it lines up differently than I have here. But how I've got it uh, lined up is that things, tasks that we define as important and not urgent is quadrant number one. Important and urgent is quadrant number two. Urgent but not important is quadrant number three. And neither important nor urgent is quadrant number four. Okay, so I've put some things in here you can see. We'll just quickly go through them. Uh, some things that are maybe important in your life, but certainly not urgent. And remember the definition, important that we're saying important things will lead to your success, your happiness, your contentedness. And um, if they don't lead to that, then they're not important. And urgent things are things that have to be done within a particular time window or the opportunity to do them will pass. So I've got in here prayer, exercise, teach son to play chess, reevaluate business plan, analyze business expenses, learn more about business, learn more about anything, relax, conversation with spouse about life. And you can see these things. Uh, most people define these things as important, but they don't have to be done in a specific time frame. If you didn't pray within the next, say, one hour, um, unless it was a, a scheduled uh, uh, church service or something like that, uh, your own personal prayer time can be put off and often is put off. Same with exercise. If you didn't exercise this morning or if you didn't exercise today, that doesn't mean that you've missed the opportunity to exercise. You can exercise tomorrow. And you can see what's happening here as I go through these things. Oh, I've always wanted to teach my son to play chess. So am I going to do that today? Or will I do that next week? Oh, today's not a good day for this reason or the other. I know I need to sit down and reevaluate my business plan. Some things aren't going well and I need to take a look at it and document a different strategy. I'll do that when I have some time. I just don't have time today. Uh, and, and it's all of these things. Relaxation is very important as well. And people often are uh, really busy throughout the day and then just don't get a, any time to sort of collect their thoughts and get their head together and relax, bring their stress level down, switch the cortisol levels in their body and, and start to experience some serotonin and some relaxation. These are things that are important, but we can always put them off. And we often do procrastinate with those things that are important, but not urgent. Now, there are other things that are important and urgent, such as paying the bills. If you don't pay the bills, that's going to detract from your happiness because eventually you're going to have a lot of stress associated with that. If you didn't file your taxes, that would probably cause you a problem. But you can see both of those things are also urgent because they have to be done within a particular time frame. Some other examples are complete deliveries to customers, to set up a newly hired employee in your software system, get their login credentials or whatever. You need to do that right away or else maybe they can't get started to even do what you've hired them to do. Respond to a customer complaint, replenish inventory, conversation with spouse about logistics. So I, you notice I intentionally put in the important but not urgent um, conversation about life and then important and urgent. So if it was like, who's gonna pick up Sally from ballet at five o'clock today? Well, that's important. You don't want to abandon your daughter at her ballet class. And it's also urgent because it has to be done within a particular window of time, okay? And then there's some things that are urgent, but not important. And these are really tricky ones. These are the sinister things that you gotta look out for. Uh, respond to email. There's a, I could certainly make a case for some emails very important to respond to. And, and you could also say that um, some email is not urgent, but there are uh, there's a lot of email that we treat as urgent and it's not important because maybe the source and who we're responding to is like, did I really need to do that? This this person is not gonna affect my happiness or, or my success, contentedness. Uh, commenting on social media, you know, maybe you, you thought you were taking a moment of relaxation and you just opened up a particular, your Facebook or whatever and you see uh, something that you, you want to respond to. 
right away. And you know, it's not relevant tomorrow or a few days later. It's urgent. I should do that right now. A text message you reply to immediately, and it was just uh, you know chit chat. These are things that are urgent, but not particularly important. You know, like if you didn't do them, who would really notice? Uh, watching the local morning TV news, you know, it comes on, let's say, from 7 a.m. until 7.30 or, or whatever, and, and you always do that. It's urgent because if you didn't do it at the time, then it's, it's not on until the next day or whatever. But it's not important. It's not that important. It's not going to uh, take away from your happiness if you fail to do it. And then, of course, water number four, things that are neither important nor urgent. And I've, I've put in here some examples, killing time playing solitaire on your phone app or gossiping with a neighbor or coworker. And you wouldn't believe how much of conversation that we have with people can be categorized as gossip and not particularly productive and fruitful conversation or even maybe, maybe not even moral conversation. Uh, window shopping at the mall. Now, if, if window shopping at the mall was your way of relaxing and just sort of uh, gaining your bearings and uh, getting some relaxation, then, you know, you could put it in a different category. It's up to you to define whether something's important or urgent. And um, the, the key here is don't be fooled. Don't fall for the tyranny of the urgent. Don't allow things to become defined as important just because they're urgent. And what Stephen Covey recommends is that you spend all of your time, as much of your time as possible, in quadrant number one. Those spend much of your time, as much of your time as possible, on those things which are important but not urgent. Because these tend to be the things that really make you effective and successful as a person. Since we've defined important in that way, then you can see that those are the things you should spend your time on. Not only that, but ironically, they are also the things that we don't spend our time on because we procrastinate. Because of the, the lack of urgency associated with these things, we keep putting them off. You never end up teaching your son how to play chess. You never uh, develop um, that strong bond with a spouse through the conversations about life. It's always about logistics and what's going on are very superficial things and you can always have a deep discussion about you know uh, lifelong plans and that kind of stuff at a later date um, maybe you'll get to exercising when the motivation strikes you and it just keeps getting put off so what you should do today is spend your time on things that are important now that would include quadrant two as well, at least the quadrant two as I define quadrant two over here, things that are important and urgent because you do need to get the things done. But when I say to spend as much time as possible over here in quadrant number one, what I would encourage you to do is develop strategies for how you can download the things that fall into the important and urgent task to somebody else if that's practical and possible. So it may be that you utilize another resource to pay your bills on your behalf so that you can spend more time analyzing your business expenses and so that those bills go down over time. And it may be that you hire someone else to file your taxes for you. So that's certainly important and urgent, but someone else does it so that you can focus on your exercise, getting your workout done. And Maybe there's somebody else who can um, set up the new employee in the system and you can, you can grant super admin privileges to somebody else in the software, somebody else in your organization so that you can spend time learning about business. Maybe you could set up some sort of uh, standard operating procedure in a multimedia format where they have screen captures and maybe even little video and some step-by-step -step instructions that shows the person how to do something themselves instead of you doing it synchronously with them every time. So these are ways and strategies that you can actually accomplish important and urgent tasks without taking away from and detracting from spending your time on the important. And then what you want to try to do is eliminate quadrants three and four entirely. Like, unless you end up redefining something 
and uh, making it go from quadrant three or four up to one. And, and that's okay to do if you realize actually that was important. It was really important to me for my peace of mind. And it does contribute to my success and my happiness, my contentedness. That's okay to redefine something. But if you are in your heart of hearts, realizing something is not important, whether it's urgent or not, get rid of it. And what's common is quad quadrant number three tends to be where people spend most of their time. And that's because of the tyranny of the urgent, that, that uh, trickery, that deceptiveness of urgent tasks redefining themselves as important because of their urgency. So somebody pops into your office and they ask you, I just need a quick question. And then if you were able to hit the pause button on life and you evaluate their question, you think to yourself, I've, I've told this person how to find that information out three or four times. There's many people in the organization who could help that person answer that question and they could just help themselves. They could just Google the answer to that. All these types of things but you're a nice person, you don't want to offend anyone, so you stop what you're doing, you become distracted, you, you fancy yourself a multitasker, which by the way is not real. We'll cover that in a different video. And so you respond to the question, it's just one minute. Well, oftentimes just, I only need you for one minute, turns out to be 20 minutes, and oftentimes there's a lineup of people who will demand your time that way, and all of a sudden your day gets away from you, and so you have to say no, you have to get good at saying no to those things and those demands on your time, which fall into quadrants three and four. The thing I said is uh, today, if you've not done this exercise, then the first thing I want you to do is start journaling how you spend your time. The first step towards improvement is realizing where the problems are, helping to define the tyranny of the urgent. So that's, that's maybe your homework for today, tomorrow, the next day, and then start to organize now let's say that you start to have a really good understanding inherently you know internally without having to refer to a document what those important things are and you start to create discipline and small little habits of spending your time on those things the next thing i want to advise you on comes from peter drucker and i would also uh guess that this is the underlying premise of tim ferris's book the four hour work week in that book he presents the notion of actually only working four hours per week. And you know, it's a catchy title and it's not necessarily meant to be taken literal, although you can do it literally. What it forces you to do if you really confine your time, your work time, it forces you to focus on those things which are most important, which we just finished talking about. And Peter Drucker says, you should only focus on two things in a day. So what I think you should do today is figure out what are the two most important things you can do today and commit to doing them. Make sure that you don't work on anything else until those things are complete. Now it's fine to go and do all sorts of other things, even in the other quadrants if you want to, as long as those first two things are completed. A little caveat here, if one of the things that you're doing that's most important for you to do, it, it you know, rises up the list of importance to the very top, and it's going to require discipline for many days, maybe weeks or months to complete, then what you want to do is you want to commit a certain percentage of your day or a certain number of hours in your day that you're going to spend working on that. You think of a project that needs to be completed by a certain time. You don't want to work on it the night before and do, you know, uh, inferior job, a substandard production. Instead, you want to budget your time. It's really important to deliver quality results. So we're going to do that over time. But the key is you have to limit it to a maximum of two things. You can't focus on 10 or 20 things. If you don't accept what I'm saying right now, if this sounds like a foreign concept to you and you're like, I, I just debate that, that's fine. I would like you to open your mind though for a moment and ask yourself why, why is it so foreign to you? Is it that you just haven't practiced this and that's why this seems impractical or impossible? Maybe you will become a much more effective, much more satisfied and happy person by doing just what I'm describing here. 
whenever I'm coaching one of my team members and I find that they're a little bit scattered and all over the map and they're not being very thorough and organized and, and accomplishing, really what I'm trying to say, when they're not being effective and they're not accomplishing that which they need to accomplish to be uh, successful in their position, I always take them back to this basic. Let's limit your thing so that you do in a day to two. What are the two things you need to work on today? And then I always say to them, it's okay if like, let's say you're putting in an eight hour work day and many of you are putting in more than that. It's okay to say, well, I'm going to spend four of those hours on these two things. And then you could allow some time for the others, but don't write off that concept that, that I mentioned about like the four hour work week, whereby confining the amount of time that you have to work, you will have to work on those things which are most important. I think that's a symptom when people are working 60, 70, and sometimes even more hours in a week, it's a symptom that they're not effective. They're not putting first things first. Instead, they're suffering from the tyranny of the urgent and they haven't made use of delegation, automation, elimination. These, these are concepts that uh, we can discuss uh, in greater detail, but there are strategies is the point to be able to focus on those things which are going to make you most successful, most happy. And why would you want to spend time anywhere else? Only if you believe that you have to, and I'm here to tell you, you do not have to. You can exercise the concepts that we're discussing today, okay? So what I'd like you to do is start to journal how you spend your time, then break it into the quadrants and, and define these things. Remember our definitions of important and urgent, and you can modify the definitions to suit your success and your goals in life, that's fine. And certainly you'll have different priorities than somebody next to you or what I might have. That's fine as well. You're going to define these things for yourself and you're going to see how much time you're spending in each of those quadrants. That's why it's good if you can to write down, uh, at least in a rough form, the amount of time you spent on it. Like if you spent uh, on a particular chore or task um, or project and you spent two hours and you just wrote it, it may, you may find that the four quadrants don't really depict where all your time is spent because you might have 15 things in one particular quadrant and only two things in another and uh, those 15 things were done in 15 minutes and the two things took you, you know, the rest of the day. And that would be good if the two things were defined as important and not urgent and the 15 things were important and urgent. That would be a good use of your time. But conversely, if you flip that and the two things, or sorry, the 15 things that, uh, well, not, not flip it. If you had those 15 things in the, um, urgent but not important and you only uh, spent uh, time on two things in your important and urgent quadrant and you did nothing in your important quadrant well you get the idea so do that and then what i want you to do the next step the third step here is start confining and setting limitations on what you'll spend your time doing down to two things you and that what that forces you to do if you think of this in life Let's say I told you today, you may only do two things. It's a bit of an abstract concept to wrap your head around, but, or maybe it's not abstract at all. Maybe it's super simple and it's oversimplified, but let's just say for the sake of argument, you could only do two things today. You might say, well, I'm going to nourish myself with food and water and I'm going to sleep. Those, if those are the only two things I can do today. What do you automatically have to do? You have to prioritize. You have to figure out what could I not do? And if you didn't do that, let's say you made a mistake and you failed, you, you had to commit and you had to write down on a piece of paper, these are only th two things today. And you forgot to write sleep and you forgot to write, uh, you know, some kind of nutritional sustenance or eat, then you would quickly learn, Ooh, I, I'm exhausted and I'm worn out tomorrow when I only have two things to do, I better write eat on there and I better write um, sleep. So that's just sort of a mental exercise to convince you of the value of making sure you prioritize those things. In the context of this um, uh, exercise for business and for improvement in life, we're gonna take uh, for granted that you're going to eat and you're going to sleep. but. Maybe I shouldn't take that stuff for granted. Maybe you don't 
have uh, good health because you don't prioritize sleep and getting um, good sleep patterns into your life. Or maybe you don't prioritize nutrition and uh, when you eat and how you eat and everything and it's causing real problems. So I shouldn't take those things for granted. And uh, but when I say you limit things to two, I'm not, that's what I'm really trying to get across here. I'm not saying you you can't, you know, you can't uh, go to the washroom and you, uh, you can't uh, eat unless those are the only two things you're going to do. What I mean to say is what two activities are you going to engage in to try to move your business forward? Limit it to two. Try doing it as a pilot project. Try doing it for a month if you can. That'll form a new habit. And I think you will find whenever I've done this with some of my key team members, they get very effective at delivering results because it's about laser focus. So that's where we're going to leave it for today. Give it a try. Uh, as always, I want to encourage you to put in the comments section anything that you've experienced related to this topic. Uh, how have you been ineffective? How have you been very effective? What have you noticed works really well for you? Let's learn from one another and uh, let's have some uh, debate and uh, discussion that uh, helps to expand all of our minds and we learn uh, from the whole community. Thanks for joining me today, Perpetual Refinement.